everybody and welcome to my video today. We are here in my craft room and I am ready to share with you the grand tour of everything. So I started in the back corner over there and I'm gonna go all the way around the room and then I'm gonna do the middle desk. So I just wanted to pop on here and say thank you so much for uh, watching all of the series of the craft room cleanup. I started in late February, early March, and here it is June. <laughs> And I'm just now wrapping everything up. So today is a very long video. I think when I started editing it, it was over, it was almost two hours long. I've tried to condense it. And then also in the YouTube description, um, there will be a link to a blog post. I've snapped photos and I've broken all of the areas down on my website. And that's where you will find everything linked that I can link. Um, there's a lot of pieces and I know I get a lot of questions. Where did you get this? Where did this piece come from? I want to be able to link all of that, but it's too much to put in the YouTube description box. So look for the blog post link. It will be up a little bit later. It's going to take me a little bit of time just to get everything transferred over and get the blog post finished. So that will be coming in just a little while. I'm going to work on that today. And uh, so you can click on that and then it'll take you to all of the links. I also have an Amazon, uh, Amazon storefront and it is organized in categories. So like organizational items are all in one category and you can click on that and you can see anything that I've gotten on Amazon. I get most of my things on Amazon or at Walmart or Target. If I'm there, we live in the middle of nowhere, so we don't even have a Target close to us. I don't get a lot of things from Target, mostly Amazon and Walmart. Uh, those are what is closest to me. So without further ado, let's jump in to the entire room tour. Next week on Friday, I will be sharing craft room decor. So all of the different things that I've used to decorate in here, I will share all of those next week. I felt like it would be better to break that down. And then also the YouTube video will have chapters on it. As soon as everything gets um, imported from YouTube and gets uploaded, I will go back and I will add chapters so that you can skip through because it is a really long video and I talk a lot. <laughs> so let's dive in to the entire tour. And if you have questions, please leave them in the comments below and let's get started. All right. I want to do a really quick overview of the entire room because I know when I'm watching these kinds of videos, one of the things that I really enjoy seeing is an overview of how everything is set up and how the room flows. I feel like sometimes people just jump right into like the organizational part or the tour and they just start diving into all of the drawers and cabinets. And I love that aspect and I love to see how things are stored but I really love to see an overview of the room. So I wanna do that for you really quick before we dive into all of the things. We're gonna start over there in that corner. So I'm just gonna give you an overview starting in that corner because that's where I will start for the actual tour. That is also the place that I started to organize and purge in here. I like to start in the corner of a room and then just work my way around. Um, it's an easy way to stay um, particularly if you're doing a really large project like this, you probably can't get it done in one day. And so if you start in a specific corner and you work your way around the room, it's easier to jump back in. So over here is a door. It goes out to the side of our house. This is where our trash cans are and our recycling. So a lot of times we walk right through here to get out to our trash cans. That is where all of my retired items are. I have really large ceilings in this room because it was a garage. And so the ceilings are really high. And then the big window that I have in here is also really high. So I, um, this is where my retired items are. And then we move around the room. That's where my albums are and the majority of my scrapbooks. And then that is the door that goes up into the living room. And then here the um, wall is back some, so it drops back. And then we have my pattern paper, uh, my TV. And then over here in this corner, we have my desk. And then this 
right here is where the garage door was. And so we took that out and we put in this window and then we put in a door, which I had not planned on doing. I had planned on just making this a wall, um, but my husband very um, was very smart of him uh, said, let's put a door in here. And I was worried about losing wall space. Um, originally, um, my desk was gonna go here in this area. And he also, when he picked the door out, he picked one with a window. And I'm so glad it lets in a lot of light and we use this door really to go in and out of. All right, now you can see over here um, is where my wall of cubes and organization starts. This was the start of my design when we reorganized the room and um, I wanted to do something different. This is what I always started with was this wall of cubes. And then this shelf here, this long white one, is a shelf that my husband and I built together specifically to go in this area. So it was very specifically, it was customized to exactly um, what I wanted. And then we're back at the door and then right in the middle of the room is the long desk and my paper tower and um, like the island in the middle of the room. So that is an overview of my entire room. Now let's dive in <laughs> to the grand tour. All right, let's jump right in to the full scrapbook room tour. So we're gonna start in this corner and we're gonna work our way all the way around the room. Hopefully you have seen my intro to this video along with an overview of the room. And now we're diving in. I wanna share some of the things that changed, what I um, added or took away during the spring clean. So if you haven't caught, I've probably already said this, but if you haven't caught all my other spring clean videos, I think there were six of them and I will list them in the description below and then they're also on a playlist. And when I started my spring clean cleanup, I started in this corner and my main uh, focus was getting all my stamps and stuff taken out. And then I just started working around the room and that's how we're going to do this tour. Okay. So here we have, um, I added this rug here. I got it on Amazon on my blog post for this, um, video, I will link everything that I can. So just head over to the blog post. There's way too many things for me to list in the description um, below. But also if I got it on Amazon, it's in my Amazon storefront and that's organized um, really well. So you can click there and probably find anything that you see if you don't want to go over to the blog post. I added this rug because there is floor damage to this floor from it's not damage we we like there was damage and we fixed it but then when we put the wood flooring in we just had pieces left over from when we originally did the wood flooring and it doesn't look pretty that's just the bottom line it doesn't look pretty it's kind of a mess and um, I wanted something to basically cover that up and so I added this rug here when I got it, it was on a huge discount. Um, I did not spend over $20 for this rug. It could have gone up um, since then because it was a fairly expensive rug. It's really nice. Um, I did alter it. So um, I cut it right there um, so that it would go right around that. I didn't want to move this. Um, and then I still have a piece of duct tape right there. I just want it to be flat. When you get the rug, they're rolled up. And I just want to make sure that it's nice and flat because I do roll this cart over that corner. On this uh, portion right here, this is all of my retired product. Um, I also moved all of my workbooks over here to this bottom shelf because I did my dies and everything I moved where my dies are kept. So these are just my workbooks. In this container here are uh, clothespins and um, just a few like random items. The clothespins are for this up here. And then there's a few parts to the shelf because the, the shelf is adjustable. So all of the parts for that are in that basket. This is a DVD stand. Again, I got it on Amazon um, and it is the larger version. I had a smaller version when my room was the other way, but I upgraded to this because it fit really nice here. This is just a little trash can from like 
the dollar store or something like that that I got. I have a couple of these um, in a couple different places. That has all of my wrapping paper. It has a lot of my stone wrap that I have left. And then some of the wrapping paper, the black and white wrapping paper is Hallmark wrapping paper that I got to do that bookshelf and a couple other pieces here in um, the office, which you will see. These containers right here are from the dollar store and they you can find them during like summer in the gardening section and they're like 10 and all I did was I spray painted them and then I added designer paper and ribbon to them um, and so these have old punches these are old Martha Stewart punches um, I'll get you closer and look I'm just going to give you an overview and then I'll go in and do a um, closer look and then this one is date stamps and then this is some old punches retired punches that I'm keeping you can see that and then I have stamps and these are like non the first couple shelves are not holiday and then the rest are holiday and I did go through those and I dwindled those down quite a bit I went through twice and pulled those out and my goal is always that whatever can fit on here is what I can keep for retired product um, I do use it uh, some in like bullet journaling or in my planners or different projects a lot of times that I don't necessarily always have time to share on my website. So that is what all of those stamps and punches are. At the top here, I have this, which was a display item from Stampin' Up! years ago, and I just have a few of my favorite cards. Andrew's card from Christina Warner is up there. I have a picture of the girls and um, myself in that frame. And then a couple cards um, that I've made and then a couple that I just don't have the heart to get rid of because a friend made them and um, I just don't have the heart to get rid of them. <laughs> and then up top is a couple vision boards that I did uh, for past week in the, um, I'm sorry, past word, uh, one little word uh, projects. I have um, a couple up there that I've just kept. So that is this corner right here. Over here, you can see in this part of the corner, we have not added the trim to the door yet. We need to do that for both doors. And then the other piece that we always needed to do that I'm just not gonna do now is wherever you see these seams in the wall, they needed to be like filled in and then they wouldn't be as noticeable. <laughs> I'm just over it and that is a huge project and I just don't want to do it so we're not doing that anymore but we do have the trim for around the windows and the door and we will eventually get to that I added these two pieces here I'm sorry it keeps um focusing on my finger when I point that say simply blessed and I have my um aprons on them those are both stampin up either I, both of those I think were both gifts that I received and then in this corner I always have my broom and my desk. All right, over here on this Calyx unit, there's not gonna be much for us to go through. The Calyx unit, is. this is the second piece of furniture that I got for this room. The first pieces that I got were the um, desktop and the Alex drawers. And then like the following year, I had saved up all year and then I got the Calyx units. So as a reminder, this has been a work in progress for the last six to eight years. 
and I did not purchase all of the furniture at once. I had to save up and then get pieces, um, particularly the pieces from Ikea. I um, added those, um, each one at a time. And unfortunately, when I first started adding furniture, they didn't have pieces a lot in black. I would have preferred to have all black furniture. Um, it just would, that's my preference, but they didn't have that. Um, so a lot of my pieces you will see are either black or white. And I've just embraced that and I, I just mix the pieces now. So the Calyx unit, I have this piece here that is four by four. And then sitting directly on top of that, I have a two by four piece and they're just stacked together. They are not attached to the wall. They're very heavy. Nobody's climbing on these. My kids never climbed on furniture. I wasn't worried about these pieces, um, particularly when my kids were smaller, they weren't even in here. Um, and you can see there's really no room to climb on them. They're very sturdy. Um, and so I never attached them. Um, and also the wall that is behind here is the outside wall of the house so this was the garage and there's two walls this one here and then this one here they are outside walls and they are stucco and it is very hard to put things into the wall and so I just chose not to do that you might want to choose to do something different um, if you're worried about that Um, my, they're 10 by 10 albums. I get them from Becky Higgins and they are albums that have my editorial layouts. And then like my one little word project, um, are there. The black one is a travel album. And then these containers I've talked about a lot. They are the containers that hold my 12 by 12, um, cardstock and pattern paper. And I have one for each of my kids. And then, um, I add like there, like that was Kayla's report card. We just got, um, at the beginning of this week, there's some photos in here. There's different things that need to go in her album, traditional pages. You can see here with like Violet, I have some traditional pages that I've done. So I have each one of those, I have one for each of my kids. And like this one here is Andrew's because his albums are right here. So that's his container. Violet's albums are right here. So her container is there. And Kayla's album is right here. And so this is her container. And so that is how my albums work with my kids. And then those, starting with those blue albums all the way up, 
our family albums until these two gray ones. And then those two gray ones are the past. The first gray one are layouts before, like when it was just me, when I was just doing an album and there's some layouts there. And then the second gray one is like family traditional pages that I don't feel like digging through these albums to try to figure out where they go. So if I do past pages, then I just stick them in that gray album. And that is how my um, albums work and then how this Calyx unit works. At the very, very top, there are boxes up there. Some of them have like glassware for different projects. I have my bags for my lighting, um, my studio lights in here. I have a couple extra big shots. That box right there at the very end are past planners because I keep my past planners. So that box is full of all of my old planners. So it's really stuff that I just do not access um, very often. And then right up there in the corner, you will see it is not painted because I couldn't reach. So I did the painting in my office of all of these walls. And with the steps here, I couldn't put a ladder um, next to the wall and I couldn't, I painted over as far as I could. And the goal was always for my husband to come in and then finish um, that. You can see even like above the door uh, because I just am not tall enough. <laughs> Like I just can't reach it. And so that's just never happened. And that's another moment that this, like I just want to point out, this room is not perfect. Um, it is great for what I do and I love it in here, but it's certainly not perfect. Um, there's just spots in here that, that are not perfect. This is um, boxes that I taped together and then I put that um, wrapping paper in. I wish I would have done the sides too, because you can see the sides. I did the outside and then the bottom pieces, and then I never did the sides. Um, quite honestly, I've thought about just painting them black or sticking some black cardstock in there, but it really, it's not very pretty, but it's very functional. I just have things, um, organized like by the way I need to deal with things. Like there's some traditional layouts in there of Kayla's volleyball stuff. And so I want to be able to the blue box that is right here is the box that I use. It's a Planner Kate box that I had gotten planner supplies in. I kept that box and it's the box that I use whenever I do anything spray. Like if I spray glitter, if I use my spray glitter or adhesive, if I'm using spray adhesive, I do so in that box. On this side of the Calyx unit, I changed a few things around here. I have a mirror that I painted right there and then I took down all of my Stampin' Up! badges and ribbons. I took those down and got rid of them. I saved my, um, the thing that attaches your name tag and badge. I forget what that's called. I saved that one because it's a Brighton one. It was given to me as a gift. Um, uh, several years ago when I was doing, when I was going to more Stampin' Up! like conferences and stuff. And so I did save that one because it's expensive. <laughs> I didn't think I should just get rid of that one. And then I have a couple emoji uh, keychains that like my kids have given me. I love emojis. And so oftentimes my kids will give me different emoji things as gifts. And then I have, instead of having my badges and name tags hanging there like I used to, I just have a couple of my sweaters hanging there that I use in here. Underneath here, it's really funny. They're just shipping boxes. I ordered shipping boxes from the post office and they're medium flat rate shipping boxes. And I ordered too many and I didn't have anywhere to stick them. And so for a long time, they were just stuck there. And then recently when I did the spring clean, I hung a piece of fabric over it. So it's a little prettier. I spray painted that, um, what is that called? That tray. And I added paper to the bottom of it. So it was just a wood colored tray. And I stuck that on top. And then in here are different like Project Life app pages, some of the kids' work, some cards, different things that need to be filtered into their boxes. And then in here is my Ali Edward kits from the last few months. That's how I organize those. I grab that and take it to my desk when I'm doing project life and that just keeps all of that is new stuff that I need to work through and I don't want to just filter 
into my organization system and that sits there. Then I have this white basket here. It has a couple cans of spray paint. That is that new color that I have done in my office. There's some um, of Andrew's work, I think is what is stuck there. A lot of times my family just will toss like schoolwork or you know, like tax documents or like whatever, like right here on this tray because they know it needs to go in here, but they don't know where. <laughs> So a lot of times that's, it ends up being like a little bit of a catch-all. There's a couple things in there that like I need to do. There's some home decor pieces that I want to hang up in my living room, a tank top I need to sew for Kayla. And then, like I said, that's um, spray paint. And so that basket just sits there right on the stairs. And so that is that little corner. Um, it's nothing fancy and literally nothing expensive. I literally already had, like I had the white basket. I had the tray already. I had the fabric already. So I literally just wanted to make this corner a little bit prettier, mainly because I see it when I'm sitting at my computer. And then I also wanted it to be a little bit functional um in that in that corner so that's what I did and overall I'm really happy with it again it's nothing it literally didn't cost me anything to do this up dating to this corner from what it was it just made it a little bit more functional and I really believe in that and making things functional if I have to have all the boxes in here I might as well make it a functional space um and and utilize it in some way so that is that little space um, for that corner. So next we will dive in and I will go through all of this paper where this paper tower is and then where the TV is now sitting. All right, now we are over here in this corner and we are gonna move our way down this wall. This is where I keep all of my 12 by 12 paper. So all of my um, card stock right here and then um, all of my pattern paper. So let's start at the very top. And up there are two Cricut machines. Those are the old Cricut machines and I still use them. I get them down when I want to use my cartridges. And those are, my Cricut cartridges are right over there. But I still have those two machines. And then um, up here, these two are empty right there and then I have one that is photo props. I have one that is craft room decor. Um, and actually I believe all three of those are empty. So but they are empty. But I went ahead and I put the circles and the um, Velcro on there so that when I do put something in there, um, I can label it right away. I have chipboard and then those are the white pieces that are in Stampin' Up's pattern paper. Um, it's a little bit thicker than like pattern paper, but it's a little bit thinner than chipboard and I use that for all kinds of things for packaging for dividers for pieces in my um, dies so all kinds of different things okay next these are page protectors so all of these albums right here are page protectors there's um these two ones right here with the gold 
um, label. Those are Allie Edward 9 by 12 and then these are all Becky Higgins, and they're from Design A to Design Z. And then these are extra um, page protectors that are like, um, not Design A, but like Design E or... Um, those kinds, like there's ones I have more of. And then we have photo props in that one. And then craft room decor on the bottom one. And then this one right here, this bottom one that is labeled, that is Erin Condren notebooks. So they're the really nice, thick uh, metal ring notebooks. And then we have my cardstock. This is all Stampin' Up! cardstock. The way that I label these is I have Velcro dots and then I just punch out black circles with a circle punch and then I just hand write on there. That is what tends to be easiest for me so that they can change and move around when I need them to. So all of my cardstock, um, the only thing that I think I really want to do is change these around so this is brights subtles regals neutrals and colors and then backups of like older colors and my older colors um are sort of done like in rainbow colors like the color way um I think I might want to just swap these so that my brights start here that's how I had always done it in the past but when we had our color refresh and I refreshed all my 12 by 12 and fixed everything I just put them up that way and it's it's kind of bothered me so I think I will swap those around um and then I have Stampin' Up! regular um pattern paper right now from the annual catalog and then the smaller catalogs will filter in here this is specialty paper, like glimmer papers. Um, I think that's actually all glitter paper. This is some 12 by 12 packs of cardstock that I just need to filter in here. And then down here, I have all my other pattern paper. So this is photo play and camera paper. This is weather paper and single papers that like I've picked out. This is 12 by 12 paper pads. This is specialty paper. So this is like foil paper, vellum, um, all of that. This is Echo Park paper packs. This is 12 by 12 Stampin' Up! old 12 by 12 paper. It's in rainbow order and that stretches about two of those. And then I have Stampin' Up! retired paper that I like to keep if there's a pad that I really like and I keep. Um, this is close to my heart. And then Allie Edwards and Becky Higgins. This is all of my extra very vanilla and basic white. These two are six by six paper. That is um, felt. So in that container is felt. And then down here, I have extra 12 by 12. Like I don't need a ton of cherry cobbler up top where my cardstock is. And so like I have like several colors that I have a lot of down there. I have Bermuda Bay, Mint Macaroon, and Sahara Sand from when it retired. That's what I have left of it. And then this is all organizational pieces. So clear bags, more labels, um, and more, um, so I get this out if I need to label any of this. And then I just have one of Kayla's baby albums stuck right there because that is where I had space for it. So that is this space here. Nice, cleaned out, everything's organized, labeled, dusted, and I, um, am very happy with it. A few things about these shelves. This bottom one here is the Ikea Calyx. So it's exactly like the black one I have with my albums. And then the one on top of it is a Target brand. And with this one, I did the hack so that in the middle, there is no um, divider so that I could fit these up here. I wish that I would have been able to get this in black. Um, the reason I didn't get the Ikea version of this is because they didn't have it. I added this right around the time of COVID and it took me forever to be able to get this unit. And then when I wanted the next one, they just didn't have it. And so I just went with the Target brand. They're the same size, basically. And um, everything fits in there the same as the Ikea brand. 
Um, these are from Ikea. These containers are from Ikea. And then these clear containers are from the container store. I know that's a little scary when I say that. And people are like, oh, they must be so expensive. They're probably one of the cheapest items you can find at the container store. And I love them. They're the same containers that I keep my kids' things in for their albums. So that is what is here. Right next to this is another cube unit. This is the um, closet made unit. It is a two by three. I used to have a two by three and then um, another two by three and I had them stacked in this area. So it looked like one large unit. That was fine. Um, I liked having the storage there and it fit in that space but I wanted to be able to put my chair against the wall. That is just an extra chair that I have in here from when I had an island and had two spots at the island. And so um, I wanted to be able to keep the chair in here. So I moved um, this these items here. So it was just one of the closet mate. I like having both the closet mate and the Ikea calyx unit the closet mate are smaller so the the inside square is like 11 by 11 which means you can't put anything 12 by 12 you can't put the 12 by 12 paper or the scrapbooks which is totally um fine it just is a different kind of storage you will also notice that it's thinner which is why on the other side of my room i have all closet made um, cubes because they're thinner. So you can see the outside pieces of the calyx are really thick compared to the um, closet made. I got all of my closet made cubes at Lowe's. You can get them at Walmart as well. And then these pieces right here, I'm going to pull out. They accidentally got shoved in the squares. I just purchased on Amazon. So you can get those like at like with 12 packs. And then I got the black and the teal. So let's go over a little bit closer and take a look at what is inside all of those. Um, this is really what inspired the whole spring clean back in February, mid-February, early March. I wanted to put a TV in here, so I did not originally have a TV in here. My idea was that I would have my iMac over here in this corner, and then I could play movies on it, or I could watch YouTube, or whatever it was that I wanted, but sitting here in this space, I, ca I can't do that. For one thing, my light directly blocks my computer, and then as you know, it's a really annoying to get up in the middle of an ad. Like I'll be watching a YouTube video and an ad will come on and I have to get up and like skip through it or whatever. And so I had decided that I really wanted to put a TV in here now that I am crafting a lot more and spending time in here more than work, like more than I'm just filming and hanging out. It also, my kids spend um, both of them spend time down here. And so oftentimes Andrew will work here. He'll be crafting and creating. And I just thought that it would be nice to have that. So I wanted to add that to small TV. I think it's a 32 inch, um, which is perfect. It fits in that space. I added a shelf, um, to that. My husband cut it down some, so my chair can still go there. And then the TV was just, the bottom part was just wide enough that we needed a little bit extra support. So he added a shelf board to the top of it. Um, I would love to have that mounted onto the wall, but as I said, that's the outside of the house. It's a stucco wall. It's miserable to hang things up and put things up, and my husband hates it. So if there's ever like a moment where I can just choose not to put something in the wall, that's what I do. Um, so that was really what inspired the whole um, cleanup process was adding that TV. And it's been really nice. Down here are just um, six by eight page protectors. That's what's in those albums. And then that other album that is striped is empty. It's a 10 by 8 album that I got from Allie Edwards and I've never been able to really settle into that size and that design so I'm just hanging on to the album. 
In this box here, there is nothing. It's just a box that I had and I covered it in paper to make it decorative. And then sitting on top of the box is a book that I also covered in paper. I think it's like a quote book I think that I got at some point. And so I wrapped some paper around it um, so it would match my room. And then there is a clock with a Bluetooth speaker. And that also is the top of that is a phone charger. And then there's some decorative items on there. And next week when I do my um, scrap room decor video, I will go over all of the things that I use for decor in this room. So let's take a look inside all of these cubes. This is where I used to have pretty packaging. And this first one are just bundles of cards um, that I've made and bundled up. This one is empty. This one here has paper party stuff. So there's some stamp sets and some prizes and giveaways, but that's literally for my paper party coming up. I use this top one just for that. Like if I have an event coming up and there's stuff that I'm working on, but it doesn't need to be out, I will put it there. That's why it's not really labeled because it normally is empty. And then down here is empty and my label has fallen off. So I just need to grab that. So that is this unit here, mostly empty, which is totally fine with me. <laughs> so then we have my chair. Underneath my chair are a few things like some extra packaging boxes, a couple extra containers that I use for like organizing different things, and then all of my shelf paper I moved under there. This is just a blanket that I have here that goes over the chair. And then this is just um, a pillow and um, my scrapbook and card magazines. All right, next is this shelf here. I have all of my photo boards here and they just tuck in right in between my desk and this bookshelf. This bookshelf is just a Walmart bookshelf, super cheap. Um, really did not spend much money on it at all. I took the shelves and I added shelf paper to all of them. The back here in this one shelf has the same fabric that is all over my room. And then down here is literally just packaging stuff, a couple catalogs. I have my layouts, some notebooks, transfer paper. It's just stuff that is really not all that pretty that I don't, I don't have a closet in here. So that was my solution for that. I got tired of looking at it. So I just added um, fabric there. I also took some push pins and originally it was just hanging with um, fabric tape, which is double-sided, and it worked great. There was nothing wrong with it. The corners were starting to peel a little bit, but really it didn't, I didn't have any problems with it. But just to add a little bit of decoration, um, I took some push pins and I hot glued buttons onto them, and then I just pushed it into this part of the bookshelf um, down here. And that worked out perfect. Here I have my dies. A quick note here, uh, editing uh, Tina here, to say that I added shelf paper to the shelves. The one that I have on this bookshelf is from Target. It's really expensive and I'm not really encouraging people to shop at Target right now, but that is where I got it. It was like $40 a roll and it is in one other place in my craft room and I did all of the shelves. And then I just wanted to say, as far as organizing your dies, you have to really decide how you work. I organized mine based on category, but you may not work that way. I also am moving away from organizing my room and retired product versus current product from Stampin' Up. And so I just wanted to insert this little clip right here where I was talking um, that you have to really find the way that you craft and the way that you work to be able to organize things so that they get used. And that was my goal, not only making this look pretty, but then also reorganizing things the way that they would work so that I could use them. Dies. So you saw me organize all of these dies. Um, I, this is where I changed a lot around during the spring clean. Um, I organized all these dies into better categories. I also went through a bunch of my dies and sold a bunch of them. My embossing folders are up here. In the last year, I have probably gotten rid of, I'd say, close to 100 embossing folders. And that's all I have left. 
So there's just only so many you can use, right? Like there's just, I didn't have the room for them and I just was willing to let go of them. So I have embossing folders there. This is a container that is like in the works. Like there's some embossing folders in here that need to be labeled and then they'll get moved here. There's some dies that also need to be labeled. There's some washi tape right here and I use that when I'm die cutting to hold my dies down. And so I just have it right there. I have a couple rolls there. These are from Ikea. I have the smaller ones and then the large ones, and they are labeled with photo paper, Velcro dots, ink for all my printers, so both my small mini printer and my larger printer. I have blades for everything, so that's like blades for my large trimmer, um, blades for my X-Acto knives. It's like if it is a blade, that's where it's at. Magnets for all things. So I have magnetic sheets, uh, magnets for like different craft projects. You know, you get the little round magnets. So if it is a magnet, it is in there. I have foam brushes. And then here I have um, a little set of acrylic paints that are mine and not Andrew's. <laughs> so uh, Andrew, a lot of times is down here in my stuff. Um, up here, um, these two things I painted with that spray paint to match um, what my craft carts look like now. One has envelopes and then the other has prizes and giveaways. Up top are my Cricut cartridges and those two containers. Those two containers are close to my heart containers and they don't sell those anymore. I got them a really long time ago. That is my silhouette up there. I never use that anymore. It's really old. I probably should get rid of it, but I don't really know where to get rid of it too. <laughs> so I just leave it there. And then at the very, very top, I actually have all of my December daily albums and they are just there because I don't access them during the year. At Christmas time, they come down and they move into my living room and we enjoy them as part of my um, Christmas decor. So that is this shelf here, all nicely done. Um, and organized. This is, it looks much nicer than it did. It is something that I stare at um, a lot when I'm crafting or filming. And so it was important to me this go around to make this look a little prettier. I am across my room now at the other side uh, under my window. And I just wanted to give you a look here and then show you also that above the TV, that's my camera, <laughs> above the TV, I just have my One Little Word albums. That's all of those there. All of these here are my Week in the Life albums. There's a little bit of decor and then some 6x8 albums that I use for 6x8 layouts that are really just layouts about my life. They're not really the kids or anything. They're just basically layouts for myself. So that is a look just from over here. And I really like the way the color works. Um, that's the same color I did this. And then there were a few other things in the room that I spray painted that color. And I really like the way it came out. Okay, so next <laughs> in this is the desk. I will pull all the drawers out and let you see. Um, the desktop is the same from when I cleaned it up for the spring clean. I have my two printers. So I have a Canon printer here um, and then a Canon selfie printer there. This one prints everything. I even print photos on it. And then that one is my photo printer. I really would like to have a printer now that I have this space. I really would like to have a printer that prints um, 12 by 12, which is like a 13 by 17 I think is what the actual printer is but I feel like now I have space I could put it there so eventually I will do that on top here I have this basket and I have my big camera in here this is my Canon um my big one it has my big lens on it and then I have some batteries and things in there that go to this camera Right here on the corner, um, here are my photo boards. So when I am taking pictures of things, that is what I pull out. And then this is a container and it has all of my cards organized in it. It has a divider and um, I have them just organized there. I oftentimes just put cards on the top there until I have a minute to organize. That spot just magically worked out. It was one of those very um, exciting moments where you're organizing something and you realize something fits perfectly that you didn't even plan. 
This here I've talked about. It's two um, Alex drawers from Ikea, the really long ones and then a short one. And then this piece here was custom made. And then we pieced all of this together to make my desk. And then there is um, where this fabric is, is a spot underneath because this is lifted up and I have computer paper under there. So just reams of computer paper um, sit under there. And then this worked out perfectly to sit right there. So in the first drawer, I have all of my Cricut items that will fit here, Cricut mats, and then um, like vellum and not vellum. What is this stuff called? Oh my word. I can't even think of the word of what it is. The stuff that you cut. <laughs> the word will come to me. Um, so that's all Cricut stuff. Next are clear bags. So these are for um, packaging of stuff, my paper parties, and um, I just have the variety of sizes. Next down is more packaging items. These drawer pools come from a company that reached out to me to review these and I love them. Um, I don't have them screwed in in the back. You, they come with screws to screw and I don't have them screwed in. I just have them sitting there. So packaging stuff, more bags. This is nine by 12 bags and these are 12 by 12 bags. Down here are some bigger envelopes. It's like letter size envelopes, um, catalog envelopes, just things that I've needed in the past for business stuff. And then down here is a hodgepodge of clear bags, little tiny ones um, and larger, you know, just different sizes. Um, this actually pulls down and underneath is all printer stuff. So printer paper, um, tape for packaging, labels, label paper, sticker paper, all of those things. And then this is just desk items. So sticky notes and pens, nail files, you know, all of that. My label maker, stuff for my diffuser. Um, this is paperwork. So current tax paperwork. And then this is, these are kind of like junk drawers. So there's legs for tables and finishing nails and different things like that. And then this is electronics. And then all of my old Stampin' Up! badges and ribbons are down there as well. Down here, we have these all over our house. They are like footstools. In fact, Andrew has one of these in his room that holds all of his Legos. And it's fabulous for that. So in there is packaging stuff, boxes um, that I use for, well, that I used to use. For mailing stuff. Then I have a fold, fold, um, foldable table right there. And then that brings us to this corner. I went through all of this and cleaned all of that out. There's my Dr. Pepper. It's been... A really hard week. Um, I know I mentioned on maybe in another video or on Facebook, but we've had several deaths. We had a death in our family. I had a death in Stampin' Up! And it's been really difficult. It's been really difficult to focus, to be in here, to anything really. And so I'm on Dr. Pepper. <laughs> that is my vice when I'm struggling that's what I do. Um, so I have my Dr. Pepper there. I went through all of this. This is like catalogs, notebooks, papers that I just have to access a lot, my labels, all of that. And then I have my um, piece there I'll talk about next week. And then over here, I will talk about all of this next week and all of this. This has mail that currently needs to go out. I have a customer that um, didn't get card kits last month that I need to include. I have a die I need to send to a friend. She purchased it and I messed up. I have a demonstrator that wants this and I'm just going to send it to the demonstrator who wants it. FYI, if you reached out to me because you saw this stamp set and you're the demonstrator that doesn't have PayPal or doesn't use PayPal, I just want to send this to you and I just have not, I can't find the message where you were like, I don't have PayPal, but I'll get PayPal. And we went back and forth. I just need to dig up that email and I just want to send it to that demonstrator. 
So reach out to me if you're that demonstrator. This has my, um, so there's three baskets here. These are linked in my Amazon storefront. I have my thank you for supporting my business postcards. And then I have my not my six by nine envelopes. These are folders I made, mini folders I made. I used to send them out to people who signed up with me for Stampin' Up. I have a little um, piece that Pip sent me. If you're familiar with Pip and I, she lives in the UK. I love the royal family. And she sent this to me from um, the, the Platinum Jubilee. She sent that to me. And I have it right there because I like to have it <laughs> protected. There's nothing else in that basket. <laughs> down below, I have Erin Condren notebooks. And I think there's an old planner down there. And also my address book. And then I have a video on this. This is how I sort my cards for the month for sending out cards for to family and friends for birthdays and anniversaries. I have a couple books right here. These are actually um, Becky Higgin, um, some of the books that she wrote, two of the books that she wrote. Down there, I spray painted that and updated that. And it says cleaning because it is my cleaning items. So I have this little container. It has some paper towels and some glass cleaner and um, some counter cleaner that I um, make up. And then down here are just sticky notes. These are boxes from Stampin' Up! from card kits and there's literally just sticky notes in here all kinds all different sizes like notepads um like daily planning notepads or um wish list notepads they're just all in there and I just have they're like this like these notepads that's what's in there I just need to put those down in those boxes so that is what is on this shelf my chair normally is right here and that is how this side of the room works. Right over here, the last piece that is on this wall, that is my grandmother's chair she had in her kitchen. It was yellow and black, and she had it for many, many years. It pulls out, so it's like a step stool. She would cook, and then when she would get tired, she would sit in that chair. And I wish I had a photo of her. I think I do have a photo of her sitting in that chair, and I should do a scrapbook page of the chair now and then the chair her sitting in it or better yet me sitting in the chair in my craft room <laughs> and her sitting in the chair in her kitchen um which makes me want to cry so that is my grandmother's chair underneath is um a bag that I used to take mail back and forth to the post office I redid that chair I spray painted it and then I added the fabric and then I purchased that flower pillow behind that are some hooks that have some things hanging on it like um I was gonna say notepads but that's not the right word <laughs> um sweatshirts that's what it is here is the door and again I have a little bell on there so that I can hear if somebody comes in and out when I'm up in my house in the living room and the kitchen this feels very detached from the house and so we have a bell on there so that I can hear if it's opened or closed that used to matter more when the kids were small but not so much anymore that they're bigger and then I know it's a little bit hard to tell but on my window I have this stuff here and it's a cling and um it's like for like privacy or like to just you can kind of see it better there it's really beautiful and I have that on that top window and I love that and then there's the curtain so now we're gonna dive into this side of the room and we're almost done I promise um we're gonna dive into this side of the room and go that way and then we will go through everything in the middle island and that will wrap up this video which if you are still here thank you so much we're about halfway done and uh thank you so much for hanging in there with me this video is really long so let's get started on this side of the room all right on this side of the room um this corner here is like my project life corner that's what I like to refer to it as um, because it has a lot of Project Life items in it. These items right here are um, those containers you can get from, I think they're called Iris containers, and you can get them. I've always gotten mine from Michael's. I wait until they're on sale and I get them. They are all labeled, and um, like there's a huge chunk of like five of them that are Christmas paper related. So like all of my Christmas paper. And then... Um, there's one I have for my grandma, all of the stuff that I have for when she passed away, like her obituary and different things like that, that I want, uh, 
at a later time I can scrapbook. I have one for each of my kids that have past layouts or memorabilia that's like larger. And then I also have one for my husband's military stuff um, because I have a bunch of his military stuff and I want to eventually um, do, do an album for him. Normally, right on top of there, this thing here lives, this container, um, but right now it has my week in the life stuff, and I use that for week in the life, and I also use it for December daily. Up here is a lot of decorative stuff we will go over next week. I have my Cricut. Um, this is my newer Cricut. Um, it is the one that works by Wi-Fi. You can see the cord sticking out of it because I just like to keep that in case I need to ever hook it up to a computer or something. And then I have four by four albums and those are um, like my year in review or my 30 days of thankful. So I have those. And then right next to it is mini albums. So this is another one of those containers from the dollar store that I spray painted and added paper to. And then these are all mini albums that I've done. I don't even know if I've shared a lot of these on my regular, um, like regular YouTube. Is that falling off? Or I think there's, decor oh, um, I think that's falling off you guys. It sure is. So let's press that back. Um, it was a project I did. Uh, it was called Pieces of Me. And you did like your hands, your feet, um, your face, your like a whole body one. Um, and then I think one was like half face. So it was Pieces of Me right here. There's the prompt. Feet, hands, face forward, eyes closed, half face, full body reflection. And I put this together. I really loved it. Um, so I have some albums like that. I also have a traveler's notebook, um, a 30 days of thankful and just some mini notebooks that don't really have any other place to live. And then up next, those are all new albums. <laughs> so those are all new six by eight albums. When I get credits from Stampin' Up and I don't really need anything else, I will often get six by eight albums. And then there's a lot of decorative stuff over here. This is the backsplash when I'm doing a Zoom call. This is what you see. So there's some decorative items over here and I will go through all of those next week. Down here, these are two Billy bookcases. So I have a large Billy bookcase and a half Billy bookcase. And then my husband just put a shelf um, that he cut down to fit right there. And then we just put liquid, well, he put liquid nails on there so that it is attached. It sort of curves down, but I don't keep anything heavy on there on that end. So it's totally fine. On this, I have close to my heart stamps. You saw me organize these. So these are close to my heart stamps in these two bins here, these two black ones. These I have an organization video on and I used these um, plastic envelopes from Allie Edwards that we used to get in our kits. And I just have them organized, stars, hexagons, word, word strips, you know, ampersands, clocks, and they are in those clear containers that I like. I have a couple extra on the side here um, for other, you know, if I have other categories that I want to do. And then this one here has the same kind of thing, but it's like kits, larger, um, alphas, um, that probably can get thrown away, um, kits that I've purchased that I've cut up, and then all of these notepads uh, mainly from Allie Edwards. And then I have this, which is a sketch thing that I made for um, scrapbook sketches. I just um, printed these out and put them on those Stampin' Up! pattern paper pieces, and then I put them on a ring. So I will put those back um, when I'm done filming. <laughs> Next down, this is um, old planner stuff. So it's like the Stampin' Up planner piece and um, just ones that I want to keep but I don't necessarily use right now. Week in the life product, day in the life product, and then file folders and desk items in that bottom spot. Next over, <laughs> the black boxes are just Project Life core kits that I miss so much. 
I wish they still did core kits. And I can take this one off and pull it out just a little bit so that you can see. You've seen these as I did my organizational stuff. You've seen that these are just core kits. These boxes are from Ikea. They don't make them anymore. I can't find them. Um, they discontinued them right after I organized all my core kits, which thankfully I got them right before they discontinued them because I love them. This middle part are all Allie Edward stamps. We have the stamps by the month. So I just made a divider and it goes January through June and then July through December. These are some I just need to put away. And then these are all themed Allie Edward sets. So this is like um, Embrace. I just, I get her kits every month. This is Evening. This is Eat. I use these much more now that I'm stamping on my calendar and um, I've been getting them for years. I think I signed up probably four or five months after she launched her themed kits. Okay, so now here is gonna be the big one that's probably gonna put me out of breath. <laughs> so let's dive in. Starting at the top here are some decorative items I'll go over next week. Here are my Project Life cards by the month. Most of those are stories by the month from Allie Edwards. This is a pretty packaging from Stampin' Up! And in it is actually these little mini clear blocks because I have a project that I want to do. I want to take vinyl, is the word I was looking for earlier, <laughs> vinyl on my Cricut and cut out my words for word of the for all of my words uh, um, each year and put them on these clear blocks and then use them as decor around my room. That is my goal. So that's what is there. This is a 10 that I covered and added that stamp to. There is nothing in that 10. Um, I don't have anything that I keep in there. Next down is my really big polka dot Cit central perk cup. This is from my friend Megan. <laughs> and we have matching cups and I will probably end up storing something in here. It's large enough and it fits on this shelf really well. And so I probably will end up storing something in there. Originally, I was going to take my solo wood flowers and put them in that cup, but I have just a tad too many of those flowers. And so it doesn't make sense. So I will eventually have something that will go there. This is another, these two are tens again from the dollar store. Um, in here, I have just like current products that I wanted to work with. Like there's a July kit. There is a photo in here. So it's just when I want something particular, I will put it in there. I have this down here with these baskets. This is letter phrase stickers. So all letter phrase stickers. These are almost a staple in Ali Edward kits. So I have that. And then these are alpha stamps, or not stamps, I'm sorry, stickers. I use those a lot in journaling. Then I have three by four cards. You saw me organize these in one of our spring clean videos. Um, so those are all organized. They are color coded. And then same with the four by six. And here these I found at the dollar store. And they have small embellishments. These are small wood veneers. And then I think these are wood veneers too. Yeah, the smaller. Those are stars and hearts. And they fit perfectly right in this spot. Next, I have my acrylic drawers. And all of these acrylic drawers have Allie Edward items. And they are like chipboard. And they are done by type. So these are like circles. And you can see there's chipboard. There's leather pieces. Um, then these are larger circles. And there's vellum and acrylic. And then half circles. There's words here. So they're just the different pieces from Allie Edwards um, that I use. There's a decorative piece here. Um, I forgot to mention in this middle slot here are just little containers like those are my Avery index tabs. These are um, some color. Somebody made these for me and sent them to me. And they're like the color pieces. 
and then some die cut cameras and different things. I just have a couple containers there. It's not the prettiest, but that's what it is. This tin here has all my pasty stuff. So like, um, for like, what's it called? I don't do it very often because it's messy, but I have a couple of them from Stampin' Up and they're like the paste that you spread over things. And then this just needs to go in words. And then these are some letters from Ellie Edwards that aren't sticker, but they're not really chipboard. And so I just have them in this bowl. Um, so that's what's in there. These are where all my Stampin' Up spots are. So these little tiny Stampin' spots, that's what that is. This is some product that needs to be put away. And this is buttons. And then when we get up here, this was a Stampin' Up item. It was a advent calendar project. And I bought one and then I, instead of doing an advent calendar, all I did was cover it and I'm using it as storage. And then each one of these little boxes are different um, embellishments. Like these, all of these are metal. So like when I pull this out, you will see these are metal letters. So I just use it to organize all of those little embellishments. The only problem with this is it's hard to remember what I have in here. And I sometimes don't remember to go look. Like once I do, then I'm like, oh yeah, I remember to do that. Um, but I wish there was a way to like label on the outside what exactly everything was, but I don't want it to look messy. Like I want it to be pretty. <laughs> So then I have my large date stamp. So that is um, just a really large, extra large date stamp. Up here I have my Erin Condren pens spritzers from um, Stampin' Up. And then I have a little decor piece. I will talk about the cups and the decor piece next week. I have a small amount of Copic, Copics. Um, I don't have that many, honestly. And then I have extra fine Sharpies fine sharpies and then bic pens i have my um basically these are like my skin tone blends and then these are all of my blends and i keep all of my blends regardless of whether they're retired so there's several sets up there that are retired that you can't get anymore but i'm not throwing mine away just because they're retired I'm over that mess. So if it is something that I use and it retires, I'm going to use it until I can't. So once the color I have dries out and I can't get it anymore, then I will shift these around. Then I have my Stampin' Up! ink pads along with my writer markers um, right there. I just have them in color family. So I have bright, subtles, regals. Then I have in colors and then neutrals. That's how I organize them. Down here, I have retired Stampin' Up! colors. So some of those you will recognize right away. Pacific Point, Bermuda Bay, Mint Macaroon, all of those just recently retired. Um, but I have the ones that are my favorite right there. I have a few close to my heart stamps, um, stamp pads that were sent to me by a friend. These are small mini punches. And then these are all current Stampin' Up! punches um, for the most part. There's some circle punches on here that are not current, um, but I just choose to keep all my circle punches because I love them. Um, eventually, I would like to get the Concord and Ninth. That is something that I really would like to invest in is the Concord and Ninth ink pads, and those will eventually go in this area somewhere. Um, I just have not done that yet. Um, it's, you know, I gotta pace myself, but that is the ink pads that I would like to start using as well. These are embellishments. I have them organized in these envelopes and I just have them like by rhinestone, pearls, and then in here are full sheets. And that is because, um, some of them just don't fit down here. This is mostly current. And then this is like stuff that's retired, but I still use. Then I have my die cut basket. My husband just die cut all of those right there. He's working on getting my basket filled up again. And I appreciate that so much. Over here is twine. So anything that is twine related, I have in this container. This is all, um, like I have a lot of just sentiment 
stamps and ones that I have gone through. And like, this is sentiments that I really love from stamp sets that I have gotten rid of, but I really love the um, sentiment, so I've kept it. So I have a few containers that are like that, that are just sentiment sets. And then a few sets that I really, really love. So the Ridiculously Awesome, Thanks for a Laugh, and then this is clear stamps. So there's clear stamps in here that I've kept. Up here is a couple older pads. They're like my Ali Edward pads, and then my um, specialty, like my copper, like my metallic ones I have there. Up here, I have this container that says brushes and it has palette knives and brushes. This box has felt type letters in it um, that I just, that's how I, I keep them. Next, this is where I keep all of my stamp sets. You can see I don't have that many stamp, uh, Stampin' Up! current stamp sets because I don't currently like a lot of stuff in the annual catalog, and that's just the truth. <laughs> so I haven't purchased that much from the annual catalog because it's just not my favorite. These are items that need to go up here, but they're currently for my paper party, and so I'm just keeping them separate. And then I have some ribbon here. These are the end color ribbons, and I'm just currently working with these, so then I will put them in my ribbon drawer. These are sentiment current sentiment sets and then these are current stamps that are that I've purchased from the annual catalog or that carried over I have my watercolor pencils from Stampin' Up in this container right here I have my lawn fawn ink pads I've really been enjoying using those I finally got those labeled and set out and I really like using them the only thing I don't like about the Lawn Fawn is that they're felt pads. And so I just have to remember that when I'm using them because I'm so used to Stampin' Up! ink pads, which are not felt, they're foam, which is another reason I really want to also invest in the Concord and Ninth ink pads because they're also foam. Then these are Alpha Letters uh, stamp sets from Stampin' Up! And then in this container, I have my glitter spray which used to set out right here, but I put my Lawn Fawn um, ink pads there. So that is this whole entire shelf. to the very bottom of the cubes here and in this first one I have pretty packaging items that I have made so over the years at different retreats and for different videos I've made a lot of different things and I just keep them in this container here and then the one right next to it I actually expanded this recently and if I have a gift to give I can just grab something really quick out of those two bins the next one down are bags <laughs> you can see like I had a little spider web there but they are um, bags and totes different ones I get from Stampin Up and then this is uh, the kids stuff for school like pencils and stuff like that and then this is pencil cases so and little plastic containers or different th packaging things that I get that I want to save that is a Cricut box it has Cricut cords and a couple Cricut boxes next is tissue paper foam for pillows my daughter was making pillows for a while and we had some foam and then a container of cords of course everybody has that right and then these three are pretty packaging items these used to be under where the tv is so i moved all of these over um, to the to this side of the room so pretty packaging items extra adhesive so the rest of my adhesive is in the rolling cart but i have that one and then down here is um, stuff that I'm getting like rid of for Stampin' Up, like pattern paper and stuff. Then that is cleaning, so um, paper towels and wipes. This is all my glitter paper in six by six. And then right next to that is my stencils. I keep them in this container. And then there is a self-healing mat right there. This is basically an empty box. Those are all empty boxes down there. 
This is planner washi tape. I know it's a lot of washi tape and I've de-stashed a lot. I keep like washi tapes, like similar ones on those jump rings. And then it's really mostly washi tape I use for my planners. Then that is my die cutting bin that has those plastic containers and the magnetic sheets that dies go on. This right here got moved over to my craft room decor. I moved all of that over to above my pattern paper. And then this is my mini machine, my mini plates. And then down here is white paper, black paper, um, vanilla paper, black watercolor paper, craft paper, acetate. And then these are extra organizers. I think I have two of those containers. This is six by six pattern paper from Stampin' Up! That is current. And then these are die cuts that I've cut out that maybe have not, um, that I've not used. Um, I have them organized by, like this is holiday and then I think there's like shapes. I'm gonna show you what's in here. This is a box, this is holiday. And then inside are just die cuts that are holiday related. So I have a little ghost there. I have some Christmas dies in there and those, I have four boxes in there and they all have different categories. And then I have the two baskets on top. One is shapes and then the other one are extra little die cuts. Next down is extra organizers. I have two bins of those. And then this is Halloween, so anything Halloween related. And then this is ribbon. And then the one right next to it is ribbon as well. And then right here, next I wanna show you, this is the way this container looked. It is all of my punch boards and extra staplers and hole punches. That's the way it looked originally when I was doing the clean out. And then this is the way that it looks now. I just organized it. I stood all of the punch boards up. I put a container in there for my um, hole punches. And then I also put my extra heat tool in there. And that looks way better, much more organized. I know exactly where everything is. And I snapped a photo just to show you the way it looks. And that is why I keep extra containers around um, so that I can utilize them in different ways. And this is a perfect way to utilize that. The next container down is all of my sewing stuff. So I have this sewing container and it was a hot mess and has been for years. I've wanted to organize it for years. So I took that out. I pulled everything out and then I cleaned up the inside of it. It has like a cubby at the bottom and then it has a tray at the top and I organized all of these items. My daughter often will get this if she needs to fix something or sew something on. So I organized that. That's how everything looked afterwards. I put all of my thread in a Ziploc container and then the tray is nice and organized. The thread sits on top of that container and then the sewing container sits down inside. The next container down, the next two, there's two on the bottom that are for ribbon. Most of it is Stampin' Up! I would say 99% of it is Stampin' Up! ribbon. I love ribbon and so when it goes on the clearance rack, I often purchase it. I cleaned all of these up, rolled all of them up, used tape to hold them together and then they are at the bottom two containers are both Stampin' Up! ribbon and you'll see that here, the one right next to it and then this one and they're just full of ribbon because I love ribbon and I can't help myself. All right, I'm at the very last part of my craft room. Um, we have gone all the way around the room. We started back in that corner and we went all the way around. We've looked at everything. So this is the middle island and out of everything in this room, when I started the craft room cleanup, this series um, back in February, I never thought that I needed to do anything with this area. And boy, was I wrong. Um, when I did the cleanup and when I went through all of this, I actually ended up cleaning up a lot more and purging a lot more from this area uh, than I actually even originally thought that I would. So these are Alex drawers and then the tabletop is from Ikea. You can see that I've added like one of those self-adhesive stick backsplashes on there. 
And I think um, I'm going to add a rolling cart right here. I actually have found one that has a top and then it has a drawer on it and then it has a couple baskets. And this is often where I will take photos. I will pull out that wooden table and I stick it right here. And then I will bring my photo boards over and take photos right here. And I think if I had a rolling cart here that had a flat surface, I could keep all of my photo props and stuff in that area and then I could also wheel it around if I needed to. I found one on Amazon for not very expensive so I think that I might add that and if I do later on down the road I will give you an update with that. Also several of you left comments when I did the clean out and clean up of this area about ways to make it so my desk does not move. I can tell that it's already crooked again after I've even fixed it since then and those were great options that I'm going to look into because I really would like to be in a place where this did not move. I like this um set up but I don't like how it moves around all of the time this is also where I do all my filming so my camera is mounted to the ceiling and then my lights are set up and when we get over to this side I will talk about my lights and you will see the way that I have them set up so let's get started with the desktop first I have my um, Cricut Joy here and then currently I have my week in the life items right here. I have a project I'm working on here and then this is all of my current items that need to be filmed and worked on and my paper party stuff. Um, usually that's what this area looks like. It's usually stacked up with things that need to be filmed or things that I'm working on. I have a laptop um, stand right here. So usually my MacBook Air goes right here. I use that for when I am doing live streams and that kind of thing. And then also if I used to watch movies and stuff or shows or things on it as well before I had the TV. Over on this side, I have my trash can. It is another one of those Grove um, tens and I just spray painted it and then I've used those same stickers and it says trash on it and then I have a couple little dishes and then the remote to my TV. I've offset my desktop so you can see that everything lines up here and then this um, there's two tabletops and they meet in the middle here and then over here I have offset it a little bit just so I have a little bit more room on this side. I used to have all of these items set up on here but I recently did that cart and you guys saw that. So let's come back over here to the very end and I am going to open every drawer and show you how everything looks. So I have two Ikea drawers here. This one is set up higher and this one is lower and on top of this this basket has changed a little bit since I did um, the cleanup I have those large ribbons right here which was what is was in here before but I have recently got into some beading projects I'm doing scissor charms so you can see that I have those right here I have another set I'm in the process of making that are different than the hearts and then I'm going to also start doing um, pokey tools custom pokey a small update I wanted to put in here so these are the uh, pokey tools here for um, like paper piercers and I got a few different options because this is something that I am trying out. Um, I actually think these are going to be the ones that work the best um, and then I got this size as well. I think this will be a great size as well. So I got those. So I added a couple containers in here. That's why I always like having extra containers around. Um, so I put those in there and then like I said I'm doing scissor charms and I have another set that I'm working on. So I think that this basket is going to be dedicated to all of like this beading work. Um, I got these two containers at Joann's and just this week I went and got some beads at Joann's. They were um, on really good, uh, there was a really good sale on these and then I have a couple other ones coming. So I think that I will probably find a different spot for my large ribbon here and then this 
container will have all of the bead stuff that I'm doing. And once I get the pokey tools and the scissor charms, um, right now I have the scissor charms for like when I do my paper party retreat. And if you joined the color club, then you got a scissor charm. Um, but I might start selling those separately. Um, it's something that I've thought about doing. And then the pokey, the custom pokey tool jewel things. Um, I've just, I've sort of wanted uh, to try it. And so I've gotten a couple supplies um, to try to do that. And I will share that uh, if I do that. So I just have the basket, it sits up here. And then I've just been filtering in all of the different beads and different things into this container. here is mostly my project life area and so here I have my wood veneer pieces none of this has changed since um originally doing this when you first saw this it's it's all how it was the next thing down are embellishments acrylic words um these pieces here um larger brads nothing nothing changed there those are all embellishments. And unfortunately, some of this stuff needs to be relabeled, but I cannot do that because I am out of labeling tape for my label maker. The next is one little word. So that did not change. Next down is bullet journaling and large letters. And there's some traveler's notebooks in the back. Then these are um, card kits that I've printed out or that I don't have much left of. Some of these are old Stampin' Up, Memory and More cards, and then there's some black and white type Project Life cards there. Here are pens. Again, I need to change the labels. So these are my, um, these are um, the Twin Tone Tombow markers, these are dot markers and highlighters, retired or duplicate Stampin' Up! markers, Sharpie S notes, fine liners, paper mate, Sharpie pen, and then there's a whole bunch of black pens back there. Here is grid paper, um, Epson photo paper, and sticker paper. That's what is here. Here is some other company product and my, um, this is my tool. This is a blade, it needs to go in blades. Um, this is my fuse tool. This is um, different size, smaller page protectors for Project Life and this is old photos. Down here is where I cleaned up a whole bunch. I have the table that I get out from time to time to use different ways. And then all of this is what I cleaned out. My large trimmer, a couple older trimmers, my scoreboard, and some self-healing mats. Clear blocks, baby wipes, and these are black and white ink pads. These are all the tools. This side over here are all the tools I use when I'm creating. This is my scrubber, my stamp positioning tool, stamp cleaner. And again, that label is wrong. Um, and then this, I really loved cleaning all of this up um, and getting all of this organized and put together. I took a lot of labels off of those containers you saw before and I just stuck them on the top of those containers. So that's embossing. This is coloring. I have my Wink Estellas there, all of my watercolors, my Zig Clean Color pens, and then items for coloring. And then down here are my re-inkers and then backup blends if I have multiples of those and then backup blades. Down there is an old toy box and it is just retired product. Over here is my trimmer my small trimmer, oops, um, corner rounders, 
slick riders, my 12 by 12 ruler, um, a hole punch, uh, journaling pens, gel pens, and then these are black and white gel pens. This is embellishments. So all of these are sequins and then different embellishments there. Next is my ribbon drawer. So this is all ribbon and it does go all the way back. My silver and gold ribbon are in the very back. This is stickles and enamel dots and like um, Nuvo drops. And this is like a junk drawer, it has my glue um, sticks, my hot glue gun, popsicle sticks, a couple extra bone folders, twine, some um, of these larger brads, a little toolkit that has a hammer, my toolkit for when I travel, extra staples. Really is kind of a junk drawer. On this side, I have my cart. It's exactly the same as when I put it together and it sits right here at the end. Then when we wrap around, we have my paper tower. I have my lights. So these are lights I got on Amazon. I love these lights. I got this recommendation from a friend who works at QVC and these are the lights they use in the studio and the lights they recommend for using at home. You can use an app on your phone to control them if you want, or you can just turn them on. I have one set here, and then I also have this, um, it's a stand for doing lives. I hate it, I don't recommend it. Um, I've never loved it. I know everybody uses them, but I really hate it. <laughs> it's, it's hard to use, it's hard to get it to stand, it always droops. It's just like, I feel like it's the worst stand ever, but I spent like $100 on it, and so I just make it work. Um, these two lights were around $100. I have them both here. They come with bags that you can um, break them down and put them in and store them in. The reason that I love these is because they're not the big box lights. So the big soft box lights I never had because I don't like them and I didn't really have room for them, particularly when I wasn't in this room. They're just so big and bulky. And these are so super thin and lightweight and they give the best, best light. So I have two of them set up over my desk. This is often where projects are waiting to do stuff. I have started my pile for my paper party that I'm currently working on. Here's some cardstock that needs to get put up, a um, decor project I'm working on, and then a review box that I need to get to. And then this is my paper tower. Underneath the paper tower, I don't think when I did the paper tower originally, I don't think I really pulled that up and showed you. These are extra containers. I use these a lot when I'm doing my paper party retreat. And then this is just a very flimsy, um, like three tiered. It's really, really flimsy. It was like 20 bucks. And I have some containers in there. I have a lint roller. I have some dividers in there. It's really nothing important. Um, and I really, I used to use that more when I was doing clubs and classes and I would store um, those kinds of things down there. I don't do that really anymore. So I don't need the space. Over here is my trash can. This is actually a laundry bin, like a collapsible laundry bin that I just put a trash bag in and it's what I use for my trash. And then underneath this is a Stampin' Storage 12 by 12 organizer. It used to be where my TV is in here. And when I got the TV, I stuck that down on the floor thinking I would empty it out and move those page protectors. It kind of works right there. Like I don't mind it there. I covered it in some shelf paper just to make it look prettier. And I had intentions of painting the edges black. I don't know that I need to do that. Can't really see it anyways. And like I said, I never really had intentions of leaving it there, but it doesn't, it's kind of works. So over here, I have my heater that is usually right over here when it's the winter and I need the heater. It's currently summer, so I don't need the heater. And then the last thing on this side is my die cutting machine. It is on one of the um, rolling, um, 
these are from Ikea. You can get them all over the place now. Just search Amazon for rolling carts and you will find a whole bunch of them. Michaels carries them. Back when I got these, you could only get them at Ikea. They came in one color and they were a light teal color, like the color of that Big Shot. I recently spray painted both of the ones that I have in this color, um, just to grab that pop of color in my craft room. On top is my die cutting machine. In the middle are plates. So I even have some of my mini plates in there that I swap out. Um, with my mini machine that is over on the other side of my room. And then the very bottom are Stampin' Up! clear cases and some canvases and a little um, snow globe that I was gifted by my husband. It's a cust custom one where you can put a photo in it and it's just down there. So that is the middle of my room and that really wraps up the entire room. So we have gone through everything. I know this was such a long video and there will be photos on my website and I will link everything that I can over on my website. Um, I have everything that I've purchased um, from Amazon and my Amazon storefront and um, I will link everything that I can on that blog post with photos. Um, thank you so much for checking out my room and being with me through this spring clean um, that I've done. I really enjoyed doing it. I'm so glad that I took the time to just look through everything, purge things that I wasn't using and get everything nice and clean. It feels really great for the summer to be in here. Um, and then I'm getting ready for my paper party. And so that will feel really nice to have that crafty weekend um, with everything cleaned up and uh, in the right place. So next week, I am going to go through this room and I'm going to show you all of the decor items. So I have some decor pieces that I've put together, that I've made, that I have purchased. Um, and it's really kind of hard to find craft room decor. I didn't really know what to look for or how to decorate my room for a really long time. And um, I am so happy with a lot of the pieces that I have found and the vinyl pieces that I've done. And I will go over all of that next week. So I hope you will join me for craft room decor and that will wrap up this very long spring clean slash summer clean series here in my craft room. I hope you're all having a wonderful day and I will chat with you guys later. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. To here on the screen are two other videos that you can check out if you want to keep watching some of my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified. And I will catch you in my next video, which will be next week. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend.